Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number seven in the CSRF module titled CSRF where referrer validation depends on header being present. All right, let's get started. This lab's email change functionality is vulnerable to CSRF. It attempts to block cross-domain requests but has an insecure fallback. Okay, so we've got an email change functionality that's vulnerable to CSRF. So the vulnerable parameter over here is the email change functionality. It attempts to block cross-domain requests but has an insecure fallback. So they do have some kind of defense mechanism that blocks requests that don't come from the domain of the website. However, it has an insecure fallback and what we need to do is exploit that fallback mechanism. So to solve the lab, use your exploit server to host an HTML page that uses a CSRF attack to change the viewer's email address. So the goal over here is to exploit the CSRF vulnerability to change the email address of the user. You can log in to your own account using the following credentials and we've got the credentials written right over here. All right, let's right click on that and access the lab. While that loads up, I'm going to open up Burp Suite Professional. So for the first part of the video, just like with all the other labs, we'll do it using Burp Suite Professional. And then in the second part of the video, we'll script the exploit on our own using only features that exist in the community edition of Burp. So if you don't have Burp Suite Professional, make sure to stick around for the next part of the video. All right, click next, start Burp. And we'll put that right over here. Next, we're gonna click on my account and log in with the credentials that we were given. All right, so this is the email change functionality that is vulnerable. The next thing I'm gonna do is click on Foxy Proxy and set the browser to send requests to Burp. So now if we try to change the email, it should be intercepted in Burp. So click on Update Email. And here we go, it's, it got intercepted in the proxy. Okay, let's send this to repeater and set intercept to off and work from repeater. All right, so when we click send to send the request, we get a 302, so a redirection. Then we follow the redirection and we get a 200 response telling us that the email was successfully changed. Now, if we go back to the request that is responsible for this email change, uh, you can see that it has only one parameter, which is email, and this is the URL that it uses in order to change the email address. Now, we said that a page could be vulnerable to CSRF if it satisfies three conditions. The first one being a relevant action. So an action that if it happens to be vulnerable, it could cause a detrimental effect to the client or to the victim. In this case, the vulnerable functionality is the email change functionality. So if I have the ability to change the email address of a user, then I can use that email address that I control in order to change the user's password. And since it's an email address that I control, the passcode gets sent to my email and then I can use that email in order to fully compromise the user's account. So this is definitely a relevant action, something that would cause impact to the client if exploited. And so this is satisfied. The second condition is cookie-based session handling. So the application has to use cookie-based session handling. And we can see over here, session handling is managed using a cookie called session. And so this is definitely satisfied. The last condition is no unpredictable request parameters. So we could see over here, the only parameter that we have in this request is the email parameter, which is definitely predictable because we're going to change it to an email that we own. And so we know the value of this parameter. Now, if there was a CSRF token, this no longer becomes predictable because we can't predict the value of the CSRF token upfront. And so at first glance, this looks like it's vulnerable to CSRF because over here, there's no CSRF token. So it satisfies all three conditions. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a CSRF exploit and then try to exploit this vulnerability and see if it works. Now I'm using the professional version of Burp. So I'm gonna use the engagement tools and click on generate CSRF POC. 
If you do not have the professional version, again, stick around to the second part of the video and we'll script it on our own without having to use the professional version. All right, first thing to do, just like with other labs, click on options, include auto submit script, and then regenerate. Now, if we look at our exploit, you've got a form element that submits to this URL over here. So it's the change email functionality. It's a post meta, just like it is with the request over here. It has one parameter, the email address, and we want to change it to an email address that we own. So let's say in this case, test1 at test.ca. And then it has a submit button. And what the auto generate feature does is it automatically submits the button once the page is loaded. So let's click test in browser. So the script is hosted on Burp Suite right now. We're going to click on copy and test it in our browser. So you send this phishing link to the user. And once the user clicks it, it should change the email address of the user. So in this case, it didn't, and it says invalid referer header. And so this is the mechanism that the exercise had mentioned. So what's happening in the back end is that they're checking the referer header in order to ensure there's no cross domain requests. So to understand what that means, we have to first know what a referer header is. A referer header is an optional request header that contains the URL of the page that is making the request. So it determines where the request is originating from. So some applications make use of this referer header to attempt to defend against CSRF attacks by making sure that the request originated from the same domain as the website. So they ensure that the request over here came from the domain of the website, which is the random number dot WebSecurity Academy dot net. Now, if it came from anything else, it gets rejected. So let's go back to Burp Suite and proxy and see how our attack worked. So here's the change email functionality. And if we look at it over here, you could see the referer header was Burp Suite, which is a different domain than the domain of the application over here. And that's why it's not working. So if you go to repeater, you'll see the referer header is the exact domain of the application. And so it worked. So this in general is not a good way to defend against uh, CSRF because the referer header can be spoofed. It's very difficult to perform that attack. However, it is possible. Now, in this case, we're not going to try to spoof the referer header. Instead, we're going to exploit how this was implemented in the backend. So the check for the referer header that is implemented in the backend. And the way to do that, I usually have a list of steps for testing the referer header. So let's write that down. The first thing I do is remove the referer header and see if the request works. So sometimes applications, what they do is they check if the referer header exists, then it'll validate against uh, the domain of the application. But if it doesn't exist, that check is not performed anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it and see if I get a 302 response. If I do, that means the request worked. And here we go. I get a 302 response. I follow redirection. I get a 200 OK response telling me that the email was changed. So this is definitely vulnerable to CSRF because the referer defense mechanism that they have, so checking the referer header, is not properly implemented. And so we need to fix our POC in order to no longer send the referer header. So by default, what happens is the referer header is included and it includes where the script originated from, which is if we say test in browser, which is burp suite. And that's different from the domain. So what we need to do is change this a little bit in order to ensure that the referer header does not get sent at all with the, with the request. And to do that, we'll use the meta HTML tag, which usually exists in the head element. So we're going to say head and close that off and then add the meta tag. So we're saying the name is the refer header. And in this case, it's actually spelled correctly, unlike in the RFC. And then the content is equal to never. 
And what that does is it instructs the user agent to not include the referrer header in all the HTTP requests that originate from this document. So now if we click on test in browser, hit copy, go back, paste it, it should submit our request. And here we go, it did. Now, I didn't change this, so just to confirm, let's do test3 at test.ca and then test in browser, copy it, put it in here, hit send, and it should change the email address, and it did. And you could see over here that the new email address is test3 at test.ca, but notice we didn't get a congratulations, you solved the lab message, and the reason is because we use the burp suite server instead of the exploit server. So let's do that over here in the body. Let's remove all this and add our script. So copy, paste, store the exploit, and then deliver the exploit to the victim. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. All right, so we successfully exploited the vulnerability by using Burp Suite Professional. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability using Burp Suite Pro and manually using the Community Edition, check out the video linked on the screen. Also, make sure to hit the share and subscribe button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.